when you're trying to do implicit differentiation, you need to remember the chain rule, which says that if y is some function of u and u is some function g of x, then y is a composite function with g of x inside of y. And the derivative of y with respect to x is a derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. OK, so if that sounds confusing, here it is in plain English. The derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So we can use the chain rule to differentiate implicit equations like x squared plus 3y squared equals 25, where it's difficult to solve for y in terms of x. Now this one's not too tough, but we'll do one that is harder in just a minute. But just remember, you're going to treat y as if it were an inside function, and then you differentiate. So let's do this example right here. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3y squared is 6y. And since y is an inside function, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is y prime. And the derivative of 25 is 0. Now what we need to do is just solve for y prime. So 6y y prime is equal to negative 2x. And then I divide by 6y. And I get that y prime is negative 2x over 6y. And that reduces to negative x over 3y. So when you do implicit differentiation, oftentimes you're going to have both an x and a y in your answer. OK? Let's do a harder one. OK, x cubed y plus y to the fourth minus xy squared plus 3x equals 20. Well, notice that this x cubed y is a product, and this xy squared is also a product. So we're going to have to do the product rule in those terms. Here we go. Doing the product rule, I'm going to get 3x squared times y plus x cubed times the derivative of y, which is y prime, plus 4y cubed times the derivative of the inside function, which is y. And the derivative of y is y prime minus, and let's watch our signs here. So I'm going to put parentheses right here. The derivative of x is 1 times y squared plus x times the derivative of y squared, which is 2y y prime. And then we're going to do the derivative of 3x. And the derivative of 20 is 0. So let's group all of our y prime terms together. I'm going to have x cubed y prime plus 4y cubed y prime. Then I have a minus 2xy y prime. And I'm going to put all the other terms on the other side. So I'll have a minus 3x squared y, a minus y squared, and a minus 3. Oh, that's going to be plus y squared when it comes over to that side, isn't it? Plus y squared and then minus 3. Now let's factor out a y prime. And finally, we'll divide by all of this to get y prime by itself. So that is the derivative of y with respect to x for this relation right here. OK? So a classic use of a derivative is to find the equation of a tangent line. So let's do it right here. Find the equation of the tangent line to the function x to the 2 thirds plus y to the 2 thirds equals 5 at the point 8 comma 1. All right? So the derivative of x to the 2 thirds is 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. 
the derivative of y to the two-thirds is two-thirds y to the negative one-third times the derivative of y, which is y prime, and the derivative of five is zero. So I can divide everything by two-thirds. And solving for y prime, I get that. And since they have negative exponents, they can switch places. So I'm going to get the negative cube root of y over the cube root of x. So when we plug in this point 8 comma 1, so y prime of 8 comma 1 is going to be the negative cube root of 8 over, whoop, y is on top, isn't it, not x. It's going to be negative cube root of 1 over the cube root of 8, which is negative 1 half. So our tangent equation is going to be y minus 1 equals negative 1 half times x minus 8. OK, so let's see what this would look like. My original function was x to the 2 thirds plus y to the 2 thirds equals 5. And my tangent line was y minus 1 equals negative 1 half x minus 8. And you can see that, uh, yeah, this tangent line does hit this relation at the point 8 comma 1.